Hello and welcome to TSG Foundation's Wisdom of the Zodiac. Today's lesson and meditation will be taken from Volume 1 of Wisdom of the Zodiac by Torquem Sardarian, Chapter 47 titled Gemini, Increasing Love. This is the third major full moon. The first one was Aries, the second one was Taurus, and the third one is Gemini. In this period, we will learn how Gemini brings us specific energies to unify us and build our bridge to our higher self. I will suggest seven keynotes that you may use as seven seed thoughts during these seven days of your celebration. I will read also powerful excerpts from this chapter that will help you understand this seed thought process. Remember when you do seed thought meditation, you take that word or sentence in your mind and you try sequentially to think about what it means. Try first to say this means physically this way, emotionally this, mentally this, spiritually this, and then finally say what is the result of using or utilizing the wisdom of the seed thought in my life. That will give you a solid foundation on how to start doing seed thought meditation. Okay, so let's begin with chapter 47, starting on page 629. I'd like to read that first paragraph. It is beautiful and it sets the stage for us on how we increase love and what that really means in our life. Sometimes when we speak about love, it is just words. We do not feel it when we say it. But slowly the meaning of love penetrates into our nervous system. We start theorizing and philosophizing about love. Then slowly we feel love. Okay, first we talk and we theorize, then we start feeling it. And when we start feeling love, everything within us changes. So this whole idea is to really start feeling what that deep meaning is. We are going to think about how we feel physically, emotionally, mentally, as a soul when it comes to the subject of love. Love is a huge subject and we discussed that in the earlier chapters. God is love, hierarchy is love, and love is the power that drives our solar system. So it is a very important energy. Let's go to the second paragraph. Though talking and reading about love is good, unless you feel in your bones what love is and have had experiences of deeper and deeper loving, you will not understand what the power of love is. So right there, Torquem is telling us love is not that sentimental, syrupy idea that we have from our music and movies. Those are fine. They're emotionally satisfying, but he's talking about power the power of love. And we are going to understand that on a deeper, deeper level. What does that mean, the power of love? So let us look at seven keynotes starting on page 630. I will read that first italicized quote and read it with me. Your love starts increasing and becoming true when people hate you and you respond with love. That's profound and very, very difficult to do. That in itself is assuming that we have spiritual and emotional maturity, that we are not just reactive mechanisms. It is saying respond with love, which means to stop and observe and listen. Where is that hatred, that jealousy, that envy coming from? Is it about you or is it about the condition of the other person? or the other group, let's say. So your first seat thought is to understand the meaning of response, not reaction. This is so important that if you are not sure what that means, take the book Cosmic Shocks and read all about response and reaction because in that mechanism, you will base the growth of your spiritual soul, the way you learn how to respond to life no matter what happens in your life, you respond with love. That means there is a deep respect in you about the loving process in life. So let me not give away that seed thought, but have you think about it. So the first seed thought is respond 
with love. What does that mean physically, emotionally, mentally, verbally? How do you respond with love? And then how do you respond with love in your quiet moments when you're trying to sleep, when you're trying to meditate, when you are trying to think about people that you do not agree with, that do not hold the same philosophy or ideology as you? doesn't matter. Remember, these lessons are about the wisdom that we can use to build bridges with each other. If we don't build bridges with each other, where are we? We can't live by ourselves, just surrounded in an echo chamber with people telling us only things that we want to hear. So you see, responding with love is a very beautiful and mature process through which you can interact with life. Okay, so that's number one. Number two quote is, your victory is the increase of your love. So the second seed thought I would like you to ponder on is victory. What does it mean to be victorious physically? Let's say victorious over addictions, over habits. What about emotional victory? Is there an emotional victory that you can think of that you will say, I do not want to feel that way anymore? How about mental victory? I do not want to think that way anymore. I do not want to speak that way anymore. What about spiritual victory where you say, no matter what happens, I still have my goal and purpose in life and I will stay focused on that. What a beautiful, victorious image that is for you. You see, this is very important. So number two seed thought on number two day is victory, being victorious. Let's go to the next page, page 631. In this keynote, Love is giving and sacrificing. You have two seed thoughts. So let me read that again. Love is giving and sacrificing. So your number three seed thought is giving. What does giving mean? What do I mean when I say I give physically? Money, time, talent, beautiful words, encouragement. What does it mean physically, emotionally, mentally? What about spiritually when you give? Could it be prayers? Could it be blessings? Could it be just a sense of goodwill that you have toward people? So meditate on the word seed thought, giving. What does it mean to give? Number four, seed thought is sacrifice. People say, ouch, I don't want to sacrifice. But there is a deep esoteric meaning to the seed thought sacrifice. It also has embedded in it to make sacred. So, let me allow you the time to meditate on that word. It is so beautiful and so important that we learn the deeper esoteric meaning of sacrifice. Don't be a sacrifice every day for our friends, for our children, for our spouses, for things that are no longer important. Let's look in our closet and take out clothes and shoes and items that we no longer need and give it to those who need it. Make that item sacred and give it to someone who needs it. You see, there is a lot of depth in the word sacrifice that we haven't thought too much about. Okay, so let's go now to page 632. The bottom part of the page, I will read that entire paragraph because I find it very, very affirming and important. Each of us has small victories. Okay, right there. This is important for you to remember that there are victories that you have every day, small, large, medium, it doesn't matter. A victory is a victory. There is a very erroneous psychological attitude about humanity. Okay, what is that? We see our faults in greater scale than our assets. Isn't that true? People will look at themselves in the mirror and say, I'm fat, I'm old, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that. Why are we doing that? What about if we look in the mirror and say, look how beautiful I am, look at the wonderful way I dress and and talk and express myself. Why not change that around? Why not sacrifice the old erroneous ways that we have always looked at ourselves, our family, our friends, and life in general? What a big change that would be if we changed that attitude. We are going to change this attitude and start feeling what beautiful assets and characteristics we have. Can you imagine just looking at yourself in the mirror or just thinking, meditating, what are my beautiful assets? This isn't narcissism, it is truth. 
we have beautiful assets and it is time that we find them. If we don't find them within us, how is somebody else going to see them? So you see, in this process, I want you to see the hidden wisdom. The hidden wisdom is find the truth of your essence, of who you are. In your essence, forget the outside. The outside will become more beautiful when you take your inner essence and you express it. So Gemini is all about expressing your true self. Remember, we are building the bridge to our true self. We are going to see the small but beautiful things we do every day. Oh, that is so beautiful. I love that because it is too hard to think what is the major impact I'm going to have today. Maybe the major impact that I have today is to say something beautiful to you, a small word of beauty. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you will make it. Yes, you are beautiful and you have assets that are beautiful inside of you. What about if I say that to my friends and family and co-workers? How does that lift them instead of waiting for that huge chance to do a huge thing? Those are not everyday occurrences, but every day you have 24 hours in which you can do something beautiful. Yes, I did say 24 hours because when we are sleeping and before we go to sleep, you can think, let me do something beautiful in my sleep in the higher worlds. Let me go to somewhere where I can give blessings to them, where I can be a blessing to them, and so on, okay? When a person focuses his attention upon and is aware of the good things he is doing, okay, you're focusing on that, eventually he will have more confidence. Okay, you are affirming and affirming, affirming and affirming, just like you do with a child, and then eventually you say, of course, I see that, I have more confidence in himself or herself and will feel that he or she can do greater, better things than he has done in the past. Okay? I'd like you to read that paragraph over and over, over and over. Meditate on that paragraph. Perhaps you take that the day of the full moon and you really meditate that. So we did say the fourth, the fourth sea thought was sacrifice, right? Now, when you meditate on sacrifice, go to that paragraph and see what useless things you are letting go and affirming the beautiful and good things that are inside of you, affirming them and adding them little by little, and eventually they become a tapestry, a bridge that will take you in the path of beauty and joy and happiness and bliss to your higher self, okay? I want you to see that structure that you are building. All right. Go to page 633 for number five seed thought. That would be the day after the full moon. Okay, the seven days, three days before, three days of, three days after. Forget about darkness. Okay, forget about darkness. Increase the light. If you increase the light, darkness will disappear. As simple as that sounds, as easy as we understand when you take a flashlight and you light it in a dark room, there's no darkness, there's only light and you can see exactly what's there. So you are going to think how to increase your light, how you are going to take that flashlight, that flame of your soul and turn it inside of you and say, I'm going to take the darkness out of my habits, I'm going to take the darkness out of the, my emotions, my mind, my thoughts, my words, the way I think about myself and other people, and I'm going to increase the light. So meditate, how do I increase the light? Do you see how these step-by-step step take you to a point where you say, now practically, I'm going to say how I increase my light. Number one, number two, number three. Make it very practical, very sequential. You see, see thought meditation is not just blah, 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 empty your mind and wander all over the universe, that is actually very destructive. The constructive method of meditation is seed thought meditation, where you think sequentially with your eyes open or closed, writing, writing your answers. I find sometimes writing my meditation is so much easier when my mind is not very clear or tired. So use these different methods. Okay. So increase the light, 
is your fifth C thought meditation. Now look at the bottom of page 633 and to the top of 634. I'd like to read that passage for you. It's a beautiful affirmation once again. Torquem is filled, has filled this chapter with affirmations. And I hope you go through them and you find those embedded affirmations in each paragraph. Find them. Because he doesn't say this is an affirmation. You have to find them. Highlight them. Say them over and over and see how they will help you. Okay, bottom of page 633. If you build a good picture of yourself, okay, you are going to build a good picture of yourself, you will be a good person. Okay? If you build an ugly picture of yourself, lamenting and weeping about your failures and mistakes, you will be equal to your mistakes. I love that. Torquem is talking straight to us, looking us straight in the eyes and telling us, build a good picture of yourself. Find the good in you so that you have heart, you have energy, you have vitality. But look at the hidden ways that you say, I have an ugly item in me. And then on the outside, you say, I have good things about me. No, this is about the outside, the middle, the inside. Go deep inside of you. Find the deep, the deep good inside of you. That is so important because then what happens? You will believe it. If we find a good on the outside, but not good on the inside, if we still have a little shred of doubt about our goodness, then that will emerge and it will create a duality in us. This is very, very profound, and I want you to think about that. Page 634, Gemini is known as the full moon of goodwill. Goodwill is so important. It is not exactly light, love, or power. Goodwill is a combination of these three. When you have goodwill, you have light, love, and power. So your seed thought number six is to meditate on goodwill. At the Gemini full moon, the great masters of our planet, masters of hierarchy, release the teaching on goodwill. They release it, and it is up to us to take that seed thought and meditate so that we receive telepathically what they are saying about it. What is it that I need to focus on this year, 2018 to 2019, on the theme of goodwill? Think of how you express goodwill to yourself, to your bodies, to your immediate family, to your group, toward all humanity. So remember, we do not live in isolation. All of humanity is our home. There are brothers and our sisters. We are one. And we are working, as I said earlier in this series, in 2018 to 2019, we are working to learn how to build bridges in ourselves and with others. Okay, so goodwill is going to be your most important seed thought of building bridges. Exercise this goodwill until the next full moon, the next year even. There is no end to this beautiful keynote. Okay, let's move on to page 635. And we want seed thought number seven on the last day. Let me read that middle paragraph for us. The teaching is not the knowledge or the philosophy and psychology that you know but a practical demonstration of striving, transforming, and transfiguring yourself. If you remember back what I talked about in Taurus of this year, I said Taurus is about contact, transformation, and expression. Now you are showing in practical demonstration what you have understood about these three major full moons. So your seventh and last keynote is how do I understand practical demonstration? What does it look like? Again, sequential, physical, emotional, mentally, spiritually. Practical demonstration of who I am in my family, in my group, and toward everyone in the world. Okay. Torquem reminds us once again on page 637 that full moon celebrations are a service. We come together to serve. Everyone must come together and meditate at each full moon in order to increase the forces of light, love, and beauty. 
I will leave it up to you to decide if we need to increase these forces. In my opinion, we do. We need to increase the forces of light, love, and beauty. Suppose we do not increase these forces, what will happen to us? We will get depressed and sad and give up. Is that what you want? Of course not. So use these wonderful seven seed thoughts as meditation keynotes for yourself during this Gemini full moon. Take each one, meditate, write it out. And if you like, send me a summary. Let me read what you have to say. Share it with others. Because with sharing it with others, we increase that joyful power that we find inside of us. Okay? All right. Now, we are going to do this wonderful meditation that is given on pages 638, 639, and 640. It is quite lengthy, but very beautiful. So if you need time to get up and stretch, put this video on pause. Stretch and deep breathe, relax yourself, and then start this meditation. If you can do this meditation at the time of the Gemini full moon, all the better. Join me and hundreds and thousands of others who will do this beautiful meditation at the time of Gemini. Okay, so let's concentrate now. Close our eyes, sit up straight. And the first thing we will do is we will integrate ourselves physically, emotionally, and mentally. And what that means is just relax yourself and just see yourself coming together. Okay, that's number one. Take 30 seconds to do that. And always breathe deeply, put a nice smile on your face. anxiety or worries. Imagine Christ amongst us. Within each of you there's a Christ and Christ is therefore amongst us. We will begin by saying the first two stanzas of the great invocation and really concentrate without having our mind waver at all. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. Take a deep breath. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. Now imagine our planet earth in space and say the second verse again, visualizing that love is penetrating into every heart on this globe. Say it with me. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. Take a deep breath. If you hate someone or if someone has hurt you in the past, Visualize Christ sitting in his or her heart. Choose three people and do the visualization. Say, may Christ return to your heart. So visualize three people who hurt you or people that you do not like. And say, may Christ return to your heart. Let's do that together.
Now we will say together the remaining stanzas of the Great Invocation together. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Say three ohms out loud or quietly. Visualize that you are actually seeing the Great Ones in the assembly of Christ. Look in at them and repeat after me. Take a minute to visualize that. Salutations to great ones. Salutations to their devoted disciples. May light, love, and power strengthen their works. Sound one ohm. Now enter into meditation. Seed thought is goodwill among all nations. What will happen if all nations are filled with goodwill? Do not let doubt enter your mind at this moment. Think how beautiful it will be when we have a world of goodwill and build that bridge with me that we are all one together in goodwill. Think of the activities of goodwill among nations. Imagine a beautiful bridge on which we have all the cultures of nations, their art, their music, their beautiful clothes, people of all colors and shapes, dances. Imagine the sciences and the financial wisdoms we can share. Imagine the politics and education that we can share with each other and build that bridge and see it. Holding that picture in your mind, sound one ohm. See how people of all religions get along with each other, respect each other, and truly realize we are all from one God, the God of love. Holding that thought in your mind, 
let us say together the mantra of unification. The souls of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve, and not exact disservice. I seek to heal, and not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love which underlies the happenings of the time. Now with this last verse, imagine strongly the vision of a unified humanity. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate. Outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Sound three ohms in silence or out loud. Repeat after me, keeping in your mind that vision of great ones. Lord, let your love heal us. Lord, let your love transform us. Lord, let your love enlighten us. Lord, let your love strengthen us. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Repeat, let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. One ohm. I wish for you a most fruitful Gemini full moon that is filled with love and the expansion of your love in every area of your life. Let that love radiate from your goodness. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.